It's about quality, not quantity. Oh! Hey YouTube, how's it going? The Comic Chief here, and today we will be continuing with, uh, rather starting on Superman issue number one. Whosoever watches this channel, if he or she be worthy, shall acquire the knowledge from The Comic Chief of volume number five. So this issue is titled The Unity Saga, written by Bendis, just like Action Comics 1001 was, but this one has Ivan Reese at the forefront, and after reading Action Comics 1001, I do have to say that I missed Reese's Superman from the Man of Steel series I just reviewed, and I prefer it 100%. The original cover was done by Reese Prado and Sinclair. I wish I got it, but well, these, these David Mack watercolor covers are pretty darn sweet, so cover B for me. Okay, so if I had to pit Superman 1 versus Action Comics 1001, I know, I know, they're separate stories, but they're both Bendis, and they both have great art. Hmm, I'd have to go with this Superman series I'm reviewing right now. The art, the art is just fan-freaking-tastic. Reese might be my favorite Superman artist. Okay, that's really bold to say. I do like Fabic stuff, and all the originals, like Adam Hughes, and... But it's a great, great win. The writing... I wonder if Bendis used this as a pilot to pitch to DC Comics because this one feels like he didn't pump the brakes one bit. The plot? I am curious as to what they're going to be doing with Rogel Czar. This one feels like a continuation of the Man of Steel series, whereas I know Action was... two, but Action kind of felt like a sequel. Same plot elements, the interweave, I got it, but man, Bendis is a badass. The character development, the relationship between Superman and fellow Justice League members is just wow. Win. Price point. Only $3.99 for an issue number one. Marvel could learn a thing or two from DC Comics on that, and, and this one has a digital code. So it's a win. This is a straight 5 out of 5 for me. Hell, brownie points for now. Uh, I, I would do 6 out of 5. Okay, so the first page of this inaugural issue has Superman flying in space, and a long but welcomed intro that recaps the events of the Man of Steel. I'll tell you what. I wasn't sure about Bendis' Superman, but now I'm sure as hell. I'm playing those titles for as long as he's behind the scenes. So Superman is flying in space, and his narration is key. Already my favorite writing throughout the book. He's a man of many emotions, and when we get into the latter part of my review, you'll see that he's a man filled with hope, love, and everything that I grew up with when it came to the man in blue. Okay, back to the review. He's flying through space, and already th this issue opens up more epic than I could have imagined. He runs into the Dominators, and this was pure coincidence because he's just flying through the galaxy looking for Lois and John, just flying blindly. Uh, no, no idea where they went, because they went on a wild tour of the galaxy with jor -El. So with the Dominators on a straight shot for Earth, Superman foiled their plans and straight up dominates the Dominators. The art's fantastic. I, I look at each panel on a two-page spread with Superman going ham on the Dominators, and he just saved the world and probably the galaxy from domination. As he finishes doing so, we cut back to his apartment in Metropolis, where he is just alone on his bed. Just as the Man of Steel ended, he's alone. Then he flashes a time when he was with his wife, Lois. Then again, alone. The next page, he's alone at his kitchen table. Then he flashes back to John Kent getting ready for school. Then the page shows him alone once again at the kitchen table. We are brought back to the now destroyed Fortress of Solitude. Superman is accompanied by fellow Justice League members, Green Lantern, Flash, and Wonder Woman. The Fortress and Kandor weren't the only Kryptonian objects destroyed, but other Kryptonian artifacts as well were either destroyed or somewhere, somewhere else that Supergirl put them at this point. Yeah. So Superman knows he needs a new home, a new Fortress of Solitude. So he finds a crystal from the depths below the old fortress. And somewhere in the Bermuda Triangle, he throws the crystal into the ocean and creates a new Fortress of Solitude. A place he can keep Krypton's history, an alien zoo, laboratories, techs, room, relics, trophies, artifacts from his past adventures. We shift to Clark Kent in the Daily Planet where he is sitting at his desk writing an expose about himself and soon deletes... Then he picks up the paper, and an article shows that the arson fires from the Man of Steel series are still ongoing. As Clark picks up the phone to call Deputy Chief Melody Moore, who now suspects Superman is an arson suspect, the Martian Manhunter telepathically interrupts and asks him to meet him outside. 
There are four panels, I think, are super important because they remind me of the classic Clark Kent turning into Superman. Panels and scenes that I know and love. So he places his hand on his glasses as if to take them off, waits for an intern to pass by while he stands outside the utility closet, where we all know he's going to go change into Superman. And when we get to Superman and the Martian Manhunter hovering above the Daily Planet, Superman refers to him as the heart and soul of the Justice League. Over the next several pages, I can see the respect, admiration, and love that Clark Kent has for John Jones. John was there in an attempt to console Superman and offer his condolences on the recent retcon of the destruction of Krypton, the loss of Kandor, and yeah, the writing is incredible and it takes away from the super serious tone, but it's a good balance. Several times, Superman tells John to hold that thought. First, it was to defeat a dinosaur. Next, it was to save people from a raging fire. Then it was to defeat an astronaut ape in space. Is that Titano? But between every save, it fortified the relationship between John and Clark. Superman asked John to look into finding a way to communicate with John and Lois. John told Superman he was the one to unite the Earth, prepare them for not just world peace, but intergalactic peace, and that his hope was a beacon for unleashing the full potential of what Earth could be in the future, and that it could only be him. This review doesn't do the writing justice. Bendis actually killed it, and I'm glad. It gives me something to look forward to. So while John sees, it's clear, sees it clear as day, Superman politely declines and tells him he'll think about it. So Superman flies throughout the world. We get flashbacks to the fabric pages from the Man of Steel, and each time he thinks back to a moment of Jor-El taking his family away from him, he flies faster and faster and explodes even faster in an, in an explosion. Then he realizes a terrible truth. I don't know if it was something new or if it was something all along that's been happening throughout the story. He realizes that the entire Earth was in the Phantom Zone and that danger was coming. All of Krypton's biggest and baddest monsters and criminals were in there with them. So the solicitation for the next issue says, Next, Rogel Czar returns. It can't be. Are they going to bring him back this soon? I know he's a new big baddie, but come on. What do you think, YouTube? And don't answer if you've already read the next issues. But is this real? Or is this a dream? Well, that's all I got, YouTube. This is Comic Chief going offline.